tell you the story of the Donner Party. Now this story happens a long, long time ago. In fact, it happens right here in America. You see, during this time, the 1800s, people were flocking to the West from all parts of the country. You see, they believed in this thing called Manifest Destiny. That is, the idea that it was their God-sent destiny to get going and expand West. It was awfully exciting back then. Whether it was for the fertile farmlands, furs, or gold, people were certain that the West would bring them prosperity. However, sometimes a certain rosy outlook of what awaited them in the West was the undoing of these brave travelers. You see, it was not all fun and games in the West. No siree, youngins. There was hardship and danger there, just like anywhere else. When traveling the trail, it was best to have your wits about you to remember. Always follow the right, correct route. It was April 16, 1846, when the nine covered wagons of what would later be known as the Donner Party left from Springfield, Illinois. They carried with them enough supplies for the 250-mile journey to California. Fortunately, it would not be enough. The families of George and Jacob Donner, James Reed, and others were about to undertake in one of the most perilous journeys along the trail. Chicken. Bacon. Eggs. Darling, Flowers. do not fear. Our trip will be short and pleasant. Once we start a living in the West, we can invite all of our friends to join us. Come now, darling, into the wagon. Do we have everything? I, I, I believe so. Or how I will miss our lovely home and our wonderful friends. Do you really think we'll ever see them again? I know we will. Now come on, we must be going. Be sure Grandma Sarah is comfortable. Yes? Okay. <laughs> My father, with tears in his eyes, tried to smile as one friend after another grasped, grasped his hand in a last farewell. Mama was overcome with, with grief. At last the drivers cracked their whips, the oxen moved slowly forward, and the long journey had begun. I cannot believe we are truly leaving everything we know to head the uncharted west, but my papa says we are to go, and so we do. The going, although smooth so far, is harder than I might have imagined. Every day, we rest at four and walk until four at night. On a day, we might travel as many as 15 miles. Luckily, we are making good time so far. Each day has been long, but the weather has been fair, and I am beginning to like traveling. There is such a sense of adventure. Father had spoken to Mr. Donner about a possible Hastings cutoff that could save miles of the trip. I hope we can take it, for though I silence my cries, I cannot help agreeing with my brothers. Are we there yet? Virginia was right. There was a cutoff, the Hastings cutoff, advertised by a man by the name of Mr. Lansford Hastings. Now Mr. Hastings' idea was a bold one, a faster route to the west. Who wouldn't jump at a chance at that? However, there was just a wee problem with the whole scheme. Mr. Hastings had never actually been on this route. All right, folks, I have discovered the rest, best route to California. Just a slight detour, and you can shave as much as 400 miles off the trip. It's short. It's safe. It's the Hastings Cutoff, folks. Just read about it in my new book, The Immigrant's Guide to Oregon and California. So, are you sure this route is safe to travel with wagons? It has been traveled before, right, <laughs> sir? Of course it's been checked. Do you take me for a fool? In fact, I was just about to head off that way right now. Today, tragedy has befallen us. Grandma Sarah, who we all knew to be ill with consumption, had died. We mourn her loss dearly. Should we take her with us and bury her in a proper grave? We have no time. We must continue if we are to make the trip in time. We can bury her here. James, you cannot take your family through there. I have just come through it, and it will be virtually impossible to cross this wagon. I suggest you take the normal route to California, for it is much safer. We are already a week behind. I cannot waste any more time by taking the normal route. Don't you trust Hastings, James? I did, until I went through his cutoff myself. You must listen, for the sake of your family. I will do what is best for my family, and go through the cutoff. That is final. June 27, 1846. We have just arrived at Fort Laramie, a week behind schedule because of Grandma's death. Father has chosen not to head Mr. James Kleiman's warnings, which we all overheard, but Hastings cut off. Wanted to reach California as soon as possible, I suppose, if Mr. Hastings thinks this route is safe. It must be now that there is certain unrest in the group. We are making a mistake. This is the cutoff, George. Will your family join us? Mine and my brothers will, but you must know that my that many families are opposed to joining us after Clement's warning. Let them do what they wish. We might just go there before him. 
He says to continue on his way and go through the salt basin. I don't get it. This doesn't seem right. One of us needs to ride ahead and ask Hastings what this means. Surely my brother will agree to go. I will ask him. No, it's all right. I will ride ahead and ask him about it. Maybe he can clarify for us. Mother has returned. Mr. St. Hastings showed him a new route that will take about a week to travel across the salt basin. Tonight, our party of 87 voted to the, continue the new route rather than go back to Fort Bridger. I am excited. What lies in store on this new path? August 25th, 1846. Panic fills the air. Mr. Hastings was wrong about this route. It has brought us nothing but hardships. We are only making two miles a day, if that. Some of the wagons have been abandoned. Provisions and time are in short supply, and so people are looking for someone to blame. They have packed Mr. Hastings and Papa. You have led us into nothing but trouble. We have run out of food and will not make it to California before winter at this rate. We will die here because of you and your beloved Hastings. Hush now. You will frighten the children. We will most definitely make it to California on time. We have finally reached the Humboldt River. We have had some, such trouble since I have last written. While trying to pass through the Great Salt Desert, we lost wagons, oxen, and many provisions. Hastings said we could pass through the desert in two days, but the trip took us five. We have lost two wagons and a total of 32 oxen. Worse, there is not enough food for the 600-mile trek ahead, and snow is falling on the mountains. I do not know what we are going to do. Everyone is angry and upset. Some men have been sent ahead to try and bring back supplies for Fort Sutter, but it might be too late. Go! Curse you awful beast! I'll kill you if I have to! Get moving! Stop this madness! It's not the poor animal's fault! We are stressed and angry! You must let it go! I'll teach you to interfere! Let go of me! I was only trying to help, <laughs> but I suppose you are beyond help now. Curse you for ruining our trip. Please, not in front of the children. Please. Ah! Please, this is madness! You will have to continue without me. I apologize for this, but it is completely necessary. Surely you cannot leave us now. You will write <laughs> You are our leader and cannot leave us alone. I know, and I really hate to leave you all. You may elect the leader in my stead. I'm sorry. We we have to leave George Donner behind and continue alone. I don't know what we will do without our leader. This trip is really turning into a disaster. We need to rest and hunt and regain our strength at the summit. But snow began to fall heavily today, and our short rest may leave us stranded here for the winter. The adults have begun to build several small cabins for us to stay in. The men will hunt tirelessly. I wish Papa had come back. I don't see how it could become any worse. Please, someone go with me to save my family. I fear for their lives in the rough mountains. Please, they will run out of food and perish. I need supplies. Get out, I don't like you. No, hush now. I will go with you, sir. What supplies do you need? Anything, anything you can supply. Please, we must hurry. What is your name? William McKetchen. And yours? Reed, James Reed. Mr. Reed, we must turn back. This road is too difficult in the winter. We will have to come back and get your family when the winter is over, yes? I suppose you are right. They will be fine and most likely hunt the, for the food they need. Come now. We will be back in, when the snow clears. Unfortunately, you see, Mr. Reed was wrong about the conditions of his group. Food was running short and so was tolerance. They decided, you see, to do something about it rather than just perish there. We cannot just sit here and die of starvation. What can we do? Any ideas? I think we need to send a group out to send word to Sutter's Fort that we are stranded and starving. I agree. We must set out at once. Yes, but we have already tried to send word to Sutter's Fort. And all the parties come back half alive. How will the new party survive? There's nothing else to be done. We have to at least try. Oh, ah, what are we going to do? We are becoming too weak to move. And there's no more food. We will never make it. We cannot turn back now and waste all the time we have already used. What can we do? Ah! No, I refuse to partake in this no. barbaric, barbaric behavior. How can we even consider it? William, there is no choice. We will all die out here. If we don't, you must listen to reason. 
I hope our rescue party, which the group is now calling Forlorn Hope, has survived the journey and will send help soon. Things have become much worse, much worse. I don't know how to say this, but the lack of food has driven people and they have begun to eat the dead. Mother says we shall not be like those bargain barbarians, but I do not know how, longer, how much longer we can survive without food. Please save us from the hell. Yeah. Good Lord, what have you done? Whose blood is that? There's no time to explain. You must send out a rescue party immediately or the rest of the group will suffer as we have in blood of our comrades. You are the man! You must send out a rescue party at once! Quick, now! <laughs> we will follow in two days with another group. Definitely! Definitely! The first rescue party arrived seven days after leaving Sutter's Fort. When they arrive, the need for help is greater than they originally had thought. They find 48 survivors, most are crazy, and some are barely holding on to life. The rescue party soon comes to a rude realization that there are many more people than they had thought. They only brought enough supplies to rescue 23 people. They had no choice and decided to take 23 of the people that are most in need and leave the supp enough supplies for the rest to live on, or so they think. November 14, 1846. Our prayers have been answered. A relief party was sent to rest to rescue as many people as possible, but I fear they cannot take all of us. What will become of those left behind? I wish Papa was here to sort all this out. I desperately want to leave, but I am afraid I'm not one of the worst off in our group. We do, we cannot take them all. This is simply grotesque. It's horrid, but what would we do if we were starving? I suppose you're right, but we can only take 17. Who can we leave to die? This is horrible. Mr. Reed, who have you chosen to take with us? Just the ones in most critical condition. We must go soon. We are here to rescue you. Follow us and we will take you to safety. Why are we hired for this job? This is horrible. <laughs> 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 they were just normal travelers looking for wealth and fame in the rest. West, facing the same challenges as anyone else. Just a little more extreme. I can't believe it. Come on now, we must hurry if we want to save Donna and his family. Hey, are you part of the Donner Party that's been stuck up here for months? Who wants to know? We are here to rescue you! Are you George Donner? Yes, I am George Donner! Yes, yes, that's us. Oh. Sit down, darling. We don't want your fever to spike again. Please take the children. George can't travel. <laughs> he has an infection to his hand. <laughs> you must take the children with you. Yes, yes, of course. And who you are, and who you all who are here? Yes, just us and our three daughters. Please, <laughs> you must take them with you. I thought you were a kid. Well, sir. <laughs> One day before the second relief party reached Sutter's Fort, the fourth and final rescue party leaves to rescue the rest of the Donna party. Six days later, they reach the rest of the party. Five late. Five days later, in a, an extensive track through the mountains, the rescue team finally reaches Sutter's Fort. Keegsburg is the last of the Donner Party to reach the fort. Today, we overheard from the third rescue crew that just reached the home after a brutal trip back. They saw the fourth party en route. Just about 20 miles from the Donner's camp on the Great Salt Lake, they told us that by the time they had reached the party, cannibalism had already started, and they were uncertain of what fourth rescue party will end up finding. By the time the fourth and final rescue party reaches the Donner camp, there appears to be only one living human, Louis Kiesberg. There are many dead bodies that are ripped to sheds all around him. He is laying on the ground as if he is in so much pain because of the lack of food. The bodies are unrecognizable. Most are just bones left. There is no more flesh left on the body. <laughs> the last of his companions he is the last of his companions to survive. Five days later, Ow! after an extensive <laughs> track through the mountains, the rescue team finally reaches Sutter's Fort. Keysburg is the last of the Donner Party to reach Sutter's Fort. In the end, two-thirds of the men that had begun on the great excursion with the Donner Party died. Two-thirds of the women and children that had traveled on Hastings Trail with the Donner Party survived. After news of the Donner disaster spread westward of their challenges and the final outcomes, and westward ch travel was eventually abandoned. Well, almost. Then news that gold was found in California brought people back to, 
to the greedy settlers, and the gold-hunger travelers made the great excursion out west until the year 1848, though few attempted the Hastings cut off. We can cut that out. Oh, Go! This is Reed. <laughs> oh! Okay, I hope. My hand is cold. Done. <laughs> Pacific fills the air. Oh, my mom's <laughs>